All right. Um, I think your written assignment is due today, postponed from yesterday. Um, are there any questions? I want to maybe answer any questions real quickly because we've got a lot to do today. We're going to switch gears and go back to Chapter 6. So how was the, uh, the parser? Actually, we spent quite a bit of time last time. There's only one final state, right? There's only one finish, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, and it's called PS finish. I wanted to ask, uh, we mm -hmm. have, where would we use T and valid? As that doesn't show up. That's a good question, but that doesn't show up on the. Uh, yeah, yeah. I suppose if you technically what we could have done would is. There be another, like a, well, but the thing of it is, is that would be kind of messy because there would be a transition on invalid from every single state. Right. So if, see, so you're I mean, assuming that invalid is it, what is not here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Technically, if you don't get to the finish, isn't it invalid? Any of these? Yeah, you'll see. You'll see when you go over when we go over the code for the implementation how to handle that. But yeah, uh, technically that's a good question actually. Technically, because T invalid was one of those uh, tokens. Token. Yeah, so that doesn't show up. So we just um, don't want to clutter the finite state machine with a transition from T invalid on every single state because it's possible anytime you get the next token for it to be invalid. So then you'd have to go to a, right. yeah. So we just won't, sh it, it's there, but we won't show it. Okay, any more questions? I think if you just follow those two rules, one final state and there has to be a, on T empty to each, I mean, it, the only way you can get to that in, that final it's finished empty. state is on T empty because, it, because after you do a line, then it always ends with, it's designed to always end with the T empty. Okay, good deal. All right, so you can hand those in whenever. Um, now, what we're going to do now is we are going to switch gears. Uh, what we did is we skipped ahead to Chapter 7 in order to, able, to be able to get you started on this big translation uh, project, this uh, uh, writing an assembler that translates from PEP8 assembly language down to PEP8 machine language. And um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Chapter 6, to the beginning of Chapter 6, and for, from now on to the end of the course, we will be doing these two things in parallel. You'll be working on your project, and you'll, then we'll also be doing um, these, uh, this material in Chapter 6. Now, what we're, the main thing about the material in Chapter 6, Chapter 6, as we see here, the title is Compiling to the Assembly Level. So, what we are going to do is you are going to be human compilers. <laughs> so what, what, yeah, so what we want you to do is what we want, so what we want to learn are principles of how compilers work or what they do. Um, not necessarily how they do it, but what they do. How they do it is a uh, subject of a compiler construction course. If, if you ever in your academic career ever have to, you know, want to get into that, uh, then it's, it's a very interesting and important topic because every time you write a program in an HOL6 language, it's got to be translated. The compiler has to translate it. So compiler technology is a big, big, well-established uh, discipline in computer science. And which is why in computer systems we want to understand that process, what it does. So what, we, so what, you, so what we're going to do is we're going to see what the compiler does when it translates from HOL6 to assembly language. And the HOL6 language that we're going to use is C++. Okay, so now, let me see if you can remember this. What is the C++ memory model? Okay. Lo well, well, it's first, global. okay, okay, so global variables are stored fixed where? At a fixed location in memory. Local, local variables, local variables are, stored stored on are stored on the runtime stack. And dynamically allocated are, on the heap. are allocated from the heap. And um, so, and we have already seen how to do global variables. Do you remember how we, 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 we in chapter five, Off memory. yeah, it's dot block. You use dot block for globals. What we're going to do now is, today we've got to do two things. We have to see how, we're going to see how local variables are allocated on the runtime stack. And we're also going to see how flow of control works. So we're going to see how the compiler does if statements and while loops. So first, 
we will, in order for to have them, in order to um, have local variables allocated on the runtime stack, we have to learn a new addressing mode. Now, so far, we understand immediate addressing and direct addressing. Here is our third addressing mode that we need to understand how, you know, how it works, and it is called stack relative addressing. Now, do you remember the registers that are in the CPU, the PEP8 CPU? Do you remember what the registers are? First, there's the NZVC bits, mm -hmm. and then what else was in there? There's the accumulator. We've, we've seen how to add to the accumulator. And, mm -hmm. and the, there's an index register. Program counter. There's a program counter. What does the program counter contain? The, the, the address. The address of yeah, the, the next, next instruction to execute. Yeah. And there's another one. Stack pointer. The stack pointer. OK, so now, and the stack pointer contains the address of what? Um, it's the stack it's on pointer. The stack. The, the, top of the, stack. the point it's, it's the address of the top of the stack. Are you with me? Now, here is what stack relative addressing, here's how stack relative addressing works. What it does is the operand is what? What does it say here? It says you take whatever is on the stack pointer and you do what to it? Add you operand. add whatever the operand specifier is, and that is the what? The address, the address in memory okay. of the operand. Okay? How's everybody with me on that? And the assembly language 5, the ASMB 5 letter, is S. That's how you write it in assembly language. But it, it's a 3-bit, I forget what the number is. Do you remember what a stack uh, for no, stack zero. for stack relative? Like zero. Uh, zero. You remember, remember? I think immediate was zero zero zero. Direct was uh, zero zero one. Oh, okay. Zero, one, zero. Is it the next? Nah, I think zero, one, I think immediate. I think uh, indirect might be. Indirect is zero one zero. Yeah. Well, anyway, we could you could look at that. We could look that up. Okay, but we'll just do it in assembly language. Yeah. Uh, actually, you want to look it up for us, actually? Yeah. Okay, might as well. Chapter four? I don't know. There's an appendix. I mean, there's all this stuff is summarized in an appendix in the back somewhere. Yeah. These are our address Well. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it. Okay. Okay, let's go on. Uh, and then maybe if you uh, tell us in a bit. All right, so now, here, so here, um, so uh, before we actually, before we actually um, use stack relative addressing, there are two more special instructions that manipulate the value on the stack, all right? And one of them is, is the add stack pointer instruction. The mnemonic is ADDSP. And can you tell by this, what does RTL stand for? Register transfer language. You see at the bottom here, we have a register transfer language, RTL. Specification of what the add stack pointer instruction does. What does it do? It takes whatever is, takes the operand, adds that to the stack pointer, and does it where? Puts it where? Back in stack. Back in the stack pointer. Okay, so that's add SP. Are you with me? And then, well, if we have an add SP, we must have a what? Okay. We, have, we also have a sub SP. Okay, so the, here's the sub SP in, uh, instruction, yeah. And what it does is that it subtracts the operand from the stack pointer. Are you with me on that? Okay, is that clear? And then, um, so those are two, those are two special, this is not, yeah, those are two special instructions, add SP and sub SP. <clears throat> and then uh, before, now where is the stack? Yes, it's in RAM. It's in main memory. And do you know where in main memory it is? We actually, we actually looked at the memory map once. Do you remember looking at the memory map? We had a... Oh, that's right. There's a, there's a... There's a... How did that work? Do you remember how that worked? I don't want to spend too much time, but... 
No, this is not a good pin. You like had your stack going down and the heap coming up from below. Yeah. Like yes. Yeah, it's like uh, I think it was something like this. There were some vectors down here. Do you remember those? Mm -hmm. Machine vectors. And FFF8. This is FF. The, the, the last two bytes are FFFE. And then FFFC. And then what? I'm sorry, FFFA. FFFA. And then FFF8. FFFF8. And then in FFF8 is, if you go to, uh, on this next slide, if you go to MEM FFF8, so here's MEM, and here's FFF8, and then this is the address of the top of the stack. And the top of the stack is actually up here in memory somewhere. And the stack, is, the stack grows upward like this. Right, and, th and this is, this, oh. it, de it depends on what the number here is, but whatever that number is, that number is the address of the top of the stack, and so this is the stack. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. F, yeah, so this is F, B, C, well, that's what's in memory, so I should put it in there. So F, B, C, F. I'm being kind of sloppy here because we've done this before, and you can... There's a lot of great diagrams back there. Yeah, there are, huh? <laughs> uh, same relative zero, one, one. Oh, zero one one. Yeah, zero one one is the uh, AAA field. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thanks for looking that up. All right, and then and so the stack is is in memory here, and the pro the program. So remember, the way this worked is the the programs are stored starting at zero 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 zero. So your program is up here, right? So here's your program. Yeah, and your uh, and and the globals are actually right here. You know, they're with the dot block stuff. So here's the globals. But the stack is, but the, 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 and the heap uh, on top of that, right? Yeah, yeah the, heap, the heap is going down this way. Heap, heap is going down this way. So that's, that's the heap. So these pictures, we've seen all these before. This is just a sloppy review. <laughs> okay, so now to show how stack relative addressing works, so, so what we're going to do now is we're going to demo add SP and sub SP and stack and uh, stack relative addressing and we're going to do this with a nonsense example nonsense. a nonsense example <laughs> so this is uh, this example the only purpose of this program this assembly language program is to demonstrate how add SP and sub SP work and how stack relative addressing works so and it's just a little Non, it's just a little piece of nonsense code whose only purpose is to illustrate this point. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to we're going to I'm going to trace this on the board. Let's trace this on the board and let's see how each what he, how each instruction works here in Figure 6.1. All right, so let's just start at the top. What's the very first instruction there? Load accumulator. What? B. Capital B immediate addressing. So what is that? So now what does that do? It's it loads the ASCII, ASCII value. The ASCII value of B in, into, the, into the right, the least significant byte of the accumulator, right? Mm -hmm. Are you with me? And now, and then what does it do? Stores that value. Now, where does it, now, store byte accumulator, now where does it store it? I thought it was uh, in the least significant byte, is that not right? Yeah, the least significant byte. Okay. Is that I, not what I said? No. I just, wouldn't, mm -hmm. never mind, nothing. Uh, it stores it at negative one plus whatever our stack pointer is. Yeah, whatever the stack pointer is. So here's the thing. So here's what, it, so let's draw a picture of it. So what happens is, you see the stack pointer, the stack pointer is a register in memory, right? And it's pointing to a cell in memory. Do you see what I mean? SP is pointing to a cell in memory. Well, if it puts the B at, so what this, so what does this do? This is saying, now how does, how does stack relative addressing work? You add whatever is in the stack pointer to the what? To the specifier. To the operand specifier, right? Yeah. And so, and so, um, what is the operand specifier there? Negative one. Yes, it's F F F F. Do you see how that? Yeah. That's the machine code. For negative one. 
for negative one. But then, so what that means is that that's, so you take whatever, whatever, whatever the address, whatever this address is, minus one. So where is the cell minus one? That's the one up here. Are you with me? Because, okay. So if the stack pointer is pointing here, then the one up here is, so this is what, you know, it's the ASCII code for B. I don't know what the ASCII, we could look up the ASCII code and put it in. Okay, but does everybody see that that's, that's what that does? Is everybody with me on that's what the second instruction does? Store mm -hmm. byte accumulator. Now, then what happens? Load the, lo lo load the accumulator with what? M. M, immediate addressing. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And then store that where? Mm -hmm. Store byte accumulator. Negative two. Negative two. So here, it's gonna, up here, it's gonna come up here. Are you with me? So that's gonna be the M. Are you with me? And then what's it? Would, yeah, question. With stacks, aren't that isn't that a last in first out? Yeah, I see. It's here at this hardware level. It's not. Well, it is, but you can. What what you're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to access below the top of the stack. This is just what the hardware does. Okay. I think you'll see. Okay. I think yeah. You, we have a, a pure, it's not yeah, you're right, you're right. This okay. isn't being pushed up as we go. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. At, the, at this level of abstraction, we're, it's not. Okay. So though, that's a detail that's hidden at a lower level. Yeah, of it. Sure. I mean, we, these are the lower levels. This is okay. the lower level of, of abstraction. You'll see. Yeah, that's a good point. In other words, we're not saying push B, push M. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's a good, very good point. That's an excellent observation. Then what's the next thing that happens? Load accumulator what? W immediate? W immediate. Negative three. Ne so, so here is negative one, negative two, negative three. So this is up here, right? Mm -hmm. So this is W, right? Is everybody clear? Mm -hmm. And then what happens? You load the accumulator. Now that's not load byte accumulator. What is it? Load the accumulator. I'm sorry. It is load accumulator. <laughs> it's, it's load accumulator. But now what is it? 335. 335. So that's a decimal number, 335. Now how many bytes does the decimal number take? It takes two bytes. But now, where are we going to store it? In the accumulator. But no, no. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, in the accumulator. But then after that, what do we do? The negative five. Store accumulator, negative five. So now here, this is negative one, negative oh. two, negative. And if you give. No, wait, wait. Bytes, negative one, negative, negative two, negative three. But now, why is this? Because it takes. It's two. negative four, negative five. Yeah. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So this is the 335. It's the least significant part of. It's the least. It's the address of the of the leftmost byte. So th it's like this one is negative one, negative two, negative three, but this one is negative five relative to the stack pointer. Right. Okay. I see that we don't we don't actually even need to know what that SP value is, yeah, we don't. because it's relative to the. That's why it's called stack relative addressing. It's relative to what. This, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, but and and now you guys, what happens then? Check this out. What happens after we do a store accumulator? Oh, another one. Sorry, I. But now, where is the I? Store byte negative six. Negative six. So now, do you see why? And so this is the the character I, and this is at negative six. So you see why this numbering is like this? It says two bytes here, but only one byte here and here and here. Mm -hmm. Is everybody with me? And now, what happens? Sub sub. Uh, sub SP. What does that stand for? Subtract stack pointer. Subtract stack pointer. And so we subtract stack pointer by what? Six. By six. So now the stack pointer is no longer pointing here. It's pointing to what was. Negative. It's pointing to the top of the stack. Boom. Are you with me? Actually, let's just erase this. Let's make it neater. Now watch this. Here's some magic on the board. Okay. Now look. Now, now SP is here. But now wait a minute. That's actually doing the push. Yeah. All right. But now you guys, what's it going to, now what does it do? Character output. It does character output Fine. from where? Here. Wait, character output from what? From stack plus five. Five stack relative addressing. But now, whoa, 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 what's coming out? This negative six, negative five, negative three, negative two, negative one, that was appropriate when that was, that's, yeah. this was, this was, these were the addresses relative to the stack 
pointer, when the stack pointer is here. Now that the stack pointer is here, now, now that the stack pointer is here, these no longer apply. Are you with me? Yeah. Now what applies? Now this is like zero, zero one. one, and now, three. but now how many bytes is this? Two, Two bytes, so this is address three, three four. four, five. So now, so now, so what does it output? Character B. output, so that is the B. And then character output from what? Four, that's the M. Character output from three, that's the W. And now what? Decimal output, output from one, that's the 335, and then character, character output, output zero. zero, right? And then. So now do you see how what we did is we pushed it by doing by going negative negatives, you know, so everybody see how we push in the hardware. The way we push in the hardware is we we store stack relative with negatives, and then we we and now, and how, how did we get this? We sub SP to get the SP here, and then the way we access them once we're here is with positive offsets. Are you with me? Well, that's the hardware. That's the way the hardware works. This this SP is a register in the hardware. Could we have never sub SP and then just started outputting from negative? Well, yeah, but but you know what, here's what happens. Like whenever you call a here's here's what we're leading up to. When you call a function, what happens? Do you remember what that happens when you call a function? Oh, oh yeah. let's review this. That, what happens yeah. when you call a function? You, the yeah, you, yeah, you have to know this now. Yeah. We got to go back and remember this. Stores space for return value. Yeah, okay, it's first thing, yeah, first st storage for the return value, then what? Uh, it's like the address of where you need to return to. No, that's not next. No. Yeah. Then it's the parameters, then it's the parameters. You, you got to remember this. Yeah. This is going to be important. Yeah. And, no, and then the what? The address. And then the return address, and then, and then, then what? And then, and then so the storage for? Storage, storage, storage for the local variables. Okay, boom. That, and then you have to sub SP to get that up there because if you call another function or if you call it recursively, okay. it's going to do the same thing. So you put them, put them, put them, boom. Okay. Call another function, ba ba ba, boom. And then you return, what happens? Boom. Boom. Okay. But this is how it actually happens in the hardware. There is a stack pointer. And that's why we add SP at the end. That's why we add SP at the end. So in case, you know, we would, so this is typically the way, but this is a nonsense example just to illustrate how add SP and sub SP works and how you access using stack relative addressing. And then to pop it off, what do we do in the end? Add SP6, and when we add SP6, what does that do? That takes this down to here. All right. And we don't bother wiping these out because that would just be, that's just, that's just going to be overwritten the next time we push something onto the stack. Now, is everybody clear on that? So here in figure 6.2 is an example of what we did here on the board, but with the actual, with that, the actual addresses, you know, based on where the stack pointer starts. Now, does everybody see how that works? So the stack pointer is actually not pointing. Notice that the st initially the stack pointer is not pointing to where the t to where the value is going to be pushed. Mm -hmm. It's going it's going to be above that. Yeah, does everybody see how that works? And then here's the same thing, but done with the offsets. And so you don't really even need to know what those hexadecimal values are in order to program yeah. with stack relative addressing. It's just wherever it starts, it's relative to the stack. Now, here's the rule for local variables. Local variables, with local variables what you do is you allocate locals with sub SP. Alright? You allocate local variables with sub SP. So once you get the sub SP, you well, subtract a certain when you, to leave room for the variable. Yes, yes, you sub SP and then that's where, and okay, so you allocate locals with sub SP, you access the locals, with stack relative addressing, are you with me? And then you deallocate the locals with add SP. Okay. Now, is that, now is that, you see that recipe? And so this is what the compiler has, has to do when it has local variables. So look, here's our first program with, stack, with local variables. Now, you guys, let's see what this does. This, here's a C++ program, and let's see if we can actually compile this. 
Okay. Are you, are you ready to compile? Okay. You guys out there ready? Because you're gonna, you're with us here, right? Okay. So, so, so let's compile this program. So, what's always the first thing that you do here? What's always the very first thing that we do? Uh, branch. Branch to where? Main. Branch to main. Okay. And now, what are we going? Now, what about this uh, bonus? Constant. But remember how we did constant bonus? Dot equate. Dot equate. And so we do bonus. Oh, that's lowercase b, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So bonus. Dot equate. And what does that dot equate to? Five. Five. Is there any code generated? Nope. No. No. Okay. And now, what about now? What about int exam one? So that's a local variable. That is a local variable. Now, what we have to do? Here's the best thing to do. Watch over here. So here's here's the best thing to do with the with this. What I recommend you do is you you draw the runtime stack the way it will appear. Now in order, what's in order? What's the first uh, local variable? Exam one. So here it's like this will be, this is exam one, right? And the next one will be what? Exam two. So that'll be on top here. Does everybody see this? Exam two will be up here. And then the next one is what? Score. Score. So score will be here, right? Now, at the beginning, where will, the, what, where will SP be? At the beginning, SP will be here, right? Yeah. Okay. But once we push all these on these local variables onto the runtime stack, where will SP be? Pointing to score. SP will be here, according to the way we just demoed, right? Mm -hmm. So now, here's my question: What will here when we say when we say int exam one? What, how will we translate? How does the compiler translate that? Uh, at SP4. Well, wait. First of all, what's the variable? First of, no, 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 no. First of all, what's the variable? Exam exam one. One. It's exam one. So here we have to define exam one. Oh, okay. See, we have to define exam one. Mm -hmm. Now, are we going to use dot block here? Yes or no? No. No, because this is not a global variable. Right. We don't. Yeah. So wait a minute. How are we going to do this? Do we do sub SP1? No, we don't sub SP because we don't sub SP. This is declaring it. Oh, yeah, 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 that, yeah, yeah, we don't. Is that low? Do, you do we just. No. Yeah, what are we going to do? It's a mystery. Let's think. <laughs> do we just store some random value there for now? Well, no, not a random value because where, because where will this exam one be? Uh, it will be on SP. the runtime stack and SP will be here. So how do we refer to well, exam? We so, SP, right? No, 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 but we will. Oh, plus three? SP at two? Is it three? It would be two. Because that's zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This would be, okay, we know that in the, f uh, that, when, w that when we actually do the, after we do this allocation, we know that its score will be zero relative to the stack. This will be two. Why is that? That's because score is two, two bytes. Okay. Are you with me? And then, and, and then this will be four. So we know that whenever we want to refer to exam one, when SP is up here, that it will be four relative to the stack. Mm -hmm. So what we will do here, check this out, you guys. What we'll do here with local variables is what? You just want to store four? No, dot what? 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 We dot equate this to four. So we can actually do. Now this is not allocating it. So we can. This load is. Exam we can say. My relative. We can say yeah. We can say load exam one stack relative, and then we can use four. Okay. Yeah. So we don't have to say four. You know, okay. that that gives us a symbol. The symbol for the variable is the offset from the stack pointer of where it will be. We do use dot equate. Yeah. Okay. And and now what? And then what? Uh, exam two. Exam two. Two. Yes. And then score. And is it dot equate zero? Dot equate zero. Okay. And then we, and now, because see, those are not executable. Does everybody see that those are not executable statements? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the very first, ex so when we, when we branch to main, we branch, we, we don't, we branch to where? 
we put main here. Are you with me? And this will be the first executable statement. Now, can you tell me what is the executable statement? What's the very first thing we have to do when we have local variables? Yeah, by how much? Now, now you see, the stack pointer will be here, right? Exactly. It, it, now, remember, bef when we start, the stack pointer will be so down here. Yeah. So we have to do what? One, two, three, four, five. So subtract SP by five? Subtract by five? Five, by six. five? So that's two, five? Six. six. Why are we saying five? Because... Because they're each two. Oh, because exam is four and five. Oh, exam so is four. Six. Yeah, six. Two here, yeah. two here, and two here. Six. So six, okay? So now, so what we'll do, so we say sub SP, uh, and now, by how much? Six. By six, and what addressing mode? Immediate. immediate. Now, do you see why that is? Because it's six immediate. Okay? Is everybody clear on this? Mm -hmm. Okay? That's the, because, and this is, the, this is where we allocate. In fact, we should put a comment here. Allocate. Now, your compiler is actually going to have to count all of that stuff. The like that. That, that is, a, I like the way you're thinking. What you should think is how this is automated by the compiler. See, the compiler knows what those types are. It knows how many bytes. Many bytes? Okay. And therefore, it can add them up and actually do that. Okay. Are you with me? Is everybody clear here? And what are we... And, and what are we... Huh? I wouldn't want to program it. <laughs> the compiler. Yeah. Okay. So, and furthermore... Um, yeah. Now we're going to come back to this comment here in a minute uh, when, when we do the demo. But okay. So now uh, and now what? Now, so now how do we do C in exam one? How do we do C in exam one? Uh, no. Oh. They said it's the input. Mhm. Mm That's an input. Des input trap. Right? Yes. So de so how do we write that? Uh, deci. Deci. But now how do we do deci now? Um, deci. Now what do we deci? Decimal input into what? Exam yeah. One. Yeah. So we can just say exam one, exam one comma s. Okay. So that will take it from the input, and it will go and what, stack relative addressing means it'll do what? We, we subtract the stack pointer here, right? Mm -hmm. So then exam one is going to be four. So boom, it'll put it in. It'll input it into here. Mm -hmm. Now is that slick? Great. Then what? Desi exam two. Desi exam two. Yes, then what? Loading. Uh, load accumulator. Load accumulator. With, uh, With what? Score. Score. Yes. Addressing mode? S. S. Wait, score? I don't think it's score. I don't think it's score. No, yeah, I don't think it's score. I don't think it's score. We, we need to do what? We need to go on the right side of the assignment statement first, right? Yeah, so, what would, so, say, so what is it? Exam one. Exam one. S. S. Then what? Add accumulator. Add accumulator. Exam two S. Exam two S. Exam two. And, and then what? There's a divide, isn't there? Yeah. Well, how do you divide by two? ASR. ASR. Uh, ASR. ASR what? Nothing. ASR the what? Accumulator. The uh, accumulator. You can ASR the index register if you want. And that's unary. And then ASRA. And then what? And add accumulator. This time it's add accumulator what? Bonus. Which is our symbol, immediate. A add accumulator. Bonus. 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 Mm -hmm. But that's immediate because bonus is the mm -hmm. constant, mm -hmm. right? Are we good? Store and now score. store accumulator what? Score. score. ST, STA into what? Score? Score. Addressing mode? S. Stack relative. Then what? Uh, Deso. Deso, decimal output. Score. Score. Oh, wait, we have a message first. So have to do oh, we have to do a message? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. so. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Actually, let's do dot, dot, dot. And then what's the last one? Be, and, be right, and then now, how do we, at the, at the end, at the end of our program, uh, what should we do? Add SP. Add SP, how much? Six. six. And then stop. Add SP. Six, immediate, and then stop. And then blah, 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 blah. And now, drum roll. Did we get it right? Yep. 
There it is, figure 6.4. Now, you guys, watch this. What do you see on this comment with the oh. sub SP? What do we see there? Um, allocate, but what does it say? What does it say? Allocate what? Exam one number exam two. It says, yeah, it says allocate pound exam one, pound exam two, pound exam three. Or sorry, pound exam one, pound exam two, pound score. What are those? Trace tags. Those are trace tags. Oh. And if you put those, and I require you I forget those. I forget. to put those trace tags in. And why do we require you to put those trace tags in? Because what will happen if you do? Are you ready for a great, a, not more than just messages? Watch this. Are you ready for the big demo? Big demo. Okay, so here's our demo. We will start by going here to the help system and seeing figure 6.4. And if we see figure 6.4, we have this great little feature that has, here's the C++ program that we translated. And here is our translation. And we notice that we have this on this line right here. We have these trace tags, exam one, exam two, and score. Tag, and we also, oh, we have to have, ooh, thanks for, thanks, DLG. yeah, thanks for uh, reminding me about that. And the DLG. And the DLG. We have, yeah, and the DLG. So, so notice here, so now actually these trace tags, I think you've seen these kind of trace tags before. What does this pound 2D mean? A That's a two-byte decimal, decimal value, two-byte decimal value, two-byte decimal value. And then what the <laughs> tracer does is the tracer sees that this two-byte decimal value is related to this exam one, and then here when we say when we say when uh, when we do the sub SP, we say allocate and we we say which ones we allocate. So we're allocating exam one and then exam two and then score. Are you with me? And then we deallocate. Notice we deallocate in the reverse order. Right. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Is everybody with me on that? Now watch this. We're going to copy this to source, and now we are going to build it. Okay, and here's our nice assembler listing, right? It has the, has the symbol table down here. Are you with me? And now we're going to start debugging this. Oh, and by the way, what's our input here? It gives us sample input 68 and 84, yeah, with batch input output. Isn't this great? Now we're going to start debugging, and watch what happens. We switch over here. It switches over here to this debug mode, and here is our trace. Yeah, and look down here, there's a little picture. Now as we single step through, the first thing we do is branch to main. And now, the, and now what we're going to do is we're going to sub SP, allocate, now watch this. Watch this. Boom. Yeah. Is that cool? It gives you the actual address of the, of the, of the uh, cells on the runtime stack, yeah? And it labels it, exam one, exam two, and score. And now when we decimal input exam one, what's it gonna take the input from? From this, this input, yeah? yeah. So and it's in the 68. So the 68 is gonna go into where? Yeah, one. Exam one, are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Boom, 80. there's the 68. And then what? 84. Boom, there's the 84. Are you with me? And then what? Load accumulator. Now we're going to load accumulator. So what's going to happen up here in the accumulator? It's going to get the value of exam Yeah, which is 68 hex 44. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And then add. What's it going to do? What's going to happen in the accumulator? It's going to add. And it'll be what? Prediction? Add accumulator? Yeah. 50? What's 68 plus 84? 152, right? Hex 98. Okay, if you want to do it. And then what? Uh, yeah, divide, by two. Divide, by two. divide by two. so that? 76. 76 trombones. And then what? Add five. <laughs> and then add five. Make it 81 up here, okay. right? And now when we store it in score, what's going to happen down here? 81. And that stack relative address, there's the 81. Yeah. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And then decimal output, score equals, character output. Sorry, uh... Return. The value, yeah, and then the new line, and then, and now when we add SP, boom, they all go away, and then we're done. Is that slick? Great.
I thought you'd like that. Okay, and that ends the demo. Okay, so that's our demo, and here is the little picture, figure 6.5, that shows what we demoed with the, and now the next thing that we want to do, and I hope I have time to do this in the next five minutes, I think we will, maybe, <laughs> at least get started, is we want to see how flow of control works. By flow of control, we mean how the, when you go through a program, how you stop, you change it from just doing the next one and the next one and the next one. So what statements in C++ change the order of execution of the statements? Loop? Right, if statements and loops, <laughs> and, loops. If oh, and, okay. and loop, or while, you know. Any loop. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so now, in order for, now, in order for an if statement to work or a loop to work, what you have to do is you have to test the value of a Boolean. Yeah. So you say, if some Boolean expression, right? Now, the way you do that at the machine level is you do it with these branching instructions. Now, we already know one branching instruction. We know the unconditional branch instruction, which is BR, and we use that to branch domain, right? Okay. Now here, the PEP8, the PEP8 instruction set has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It has eight conditional branching instructions. Okay. Now LE stands for less than. Equal to. LT, sorry, LE is less than or equal to. LT is less than. EQ is equal to. NE is not equal to. GE is greater than or equal to. And GT is greater than. Are you with me? And then if you want to branch on the V bit or the C bit, you can do BRV and BRC. So there's, a, in each one of these instructions, you can look them up in the table. They have an opcode and la di da di da Right? Now, how do they work? Yeah. What they do is they inspect the N and the Z bits. That's what they do. They inspect the N and the Z, well, and, or, and the V and the C bits. They, they inspect some combination of those bits. And what they do is, now what, which register in the CPU tells you the instruction to execute next? PC. The program counter. That means that if you ever change the value of the program counter, then you are changing the, the instruction that's going to be fetched next. Okay. So we are, doing an are you with me? Is that clear? So the way the branching instructions work is they change the content of the program counter. But now, if it's a unconditional branch, it always changes the value of the program counter. But if it's a conditional branch, it only changes the value of the program counter if certain conditions are met. Okay. And the conditions that are met are listed on this next slide. So. How does BRLE work? How does branch if less than or equal to work? What it does is it checks if the end bit is 1 or the Z bit is 1. Then it changes the program counter. Whereas BRLT only changes the value of the program counter if what? If, it's if N is 1. Yeah, question. Why N or Z? <laughs> hmm? Yeah, that's a good, that, that is a really good question. It's, Go ahead. It's negative or zero, is what that's telling you. If N is one, then it's a negative number. If Z is one, it's all zero. So we we're talking relative to zero with these. Okay, actually, maybe, maybe I'll, 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 I'll less than or equal to zero. Let, yeah, 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 zero, yeah, oh yeah, let, okay. yeah, let me now, let, let me explain how these work. In order for each one of these to work, what must have happened Prior Some to, sort of pri yes, yeah. in order for these to work, something prior to that must have set the N, the Z, and the V and C bits. So these only work in conjunction with what an instruction that got executed before. Are you with me? So what you have to do is you have to look at the instructions that, ex the instruction that executed before that changed the N, Z, V, C bits and then, in and then have this branch appropriately. Okay. 
but actually what Brooks said was right, that n is, n is negative, z is zero. Right. So, so you could say branch if less than or equal to zero. We're not, we don't actually give it. Well, it all depends on the instruction that happened before. It depends on the instruction that happened before. So the only way for us to make sense of this is to show you some examples of of the instruction that goes before that sets the NZVC bits and then and then the conditional branch. All right. So now here is our first program that shows how conditional flow of control works. So what do we have? First of all, is number a well I see it's time to leave. <laughs> so I guess now here's the thing. You have you have um, two homework problems, assembly language homework problems to do from chapter six. One of them is with an if statement and the other one is with a while. I think we've gotten you started pretty good on the concept here. So I think you can read, I think you can read through this and do it. But what we'll do is we will pick up here at the beginning of class on Thursday. And you have until Thursday, as usual, you have till Thursday midnight to get them done. But they're really short and they're just, they're just two PEP-8 programs to translate, to translate programs like this. One's an if statement and one's a while. All right? So, but it sounds like you're with me pretty good. We didn't quite make it as far as we wanted, but we'll call it quits. All right, see you next time. <laughs>